a lot of times it doesn't feel like it's getting me anywhere, you know, but I think if I was in it for the money, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have kept doing this, you know, but I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the challenge. Montalvo Machine is a one man shop located in Statham, Georgia. It was founded by Mason Montalvo, who designed the facility from top to bottom to meet his needs. You know, I, I think that would be my piece of advice is if, if you want to do something, don't do it for the money. The money won't be there unless you love what you're doing, you know. The shop focuses on machining and fabrication, producing all parts with a combination of welding and traditional machining and turning. The shop began making handrails for commercial and residential construction, then moved into metal fabrication, repair, and prototyping. Running a one-man shop, Montalvo has to be a skilled designer, programmer, engineer, machinist, and welder. Let's see how he does it. First job I ever had was working at Chick-fil-A, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I learned kind of how to hustle there and uh, I went to work for a much larger company that's local here. And, uh, and they were, they're a big industrial fabrication company. That was one of, that's my, my favorite place I ever worked. I loved the folks out there, but I just wanted to start my own thing, you know, and it was, it was time to do that. And I, and I ran on out of there and started doing this, kind of jumped off a cliff to be honest, <laughs> you know. When you landed. I, I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> For the benefit of the camera, can you tell us the story of this uh, rest again? Yeah, absolutely. 2021 is when I actually got the LLC, you know, within a year or so. Um, after getting the lathe, I realized I needed a steady rest. Uh, and I reached out to the blonde, and I realized how much a steady rest would cost me new. You kind of have three options with steady rest. You can buy one new from the company if whoever still makes parts for their lathes, which LeBlanc fortunately does. Um, you can get one from the junkyard, and modify it, or you can make one. You know, and you really they tell you, you know, hey, it doesn't it doesn't need to be that that uh, that great or whatever. You know, it's just got to do the job, but I'm a little bit of a crazy person. And so I decided that I was going to make one and I was going to make it, make it right. Uh, and so I, I ended up spending about as much in time as I would have spent on buying a steady rest from, from, uh, from LeBlanc, you know, and I understood quickly why they cost so much, but, um, I designed all this infusion, you know, and I, I did my best. And this is something I deal with a lot with machining is, you know, I've got to build the stuff. So I did my best to design everything so that it kind of fit together like Legos. Um, you know, I obviously had, had these plasma cut out, you know, and then I machined them afterward and I machined in these pins that, these spacer pins were all to about a two or three thousandths tolerance into these holes so that everything's sandwiched together right. Um, and then I just plug welded all that together. These here, I, uh, if I can remember how I put them in there, I, I drilled, I ended up counter boring holes into these pieces of square bar so that when I put it all together, I could actually stick a pin in there, line it up, tack it in place, and then pull the pin out and plug weld the hole back up. Um, and I, you know, I, I did my best. I, like I said, I did an infusion. I modeled the lathe. Um, I modeled the, uh, I modeled the ways and all of the geometry of the ways that was pertinent. I modeled the carriage so that I'd know where the carriage was going to hit under all of my, uh, under all the parts of this. And I modeled down to, I modeled the, uh, the actual swing to make sure that it, when it laid back, it would sit back at just the right angle so that it wouldn't, uh, 
so that it wouldn't just fall back onto my parts while I was trying to work. You know, I wanted it to stay open. Screws and bearings is the only things that I purchased. Everything else I made in the shop on these two machines here. So that's why I started my own business because nobody lets you go overboard when you work for somebody else. So I, I work for myself and I can go overboard all I want, you know? <laughs> so I did Inventor when I was in high school a lot. And um, I got fairly proficient with that, just playing with it. But yeah, Inventor wouldn't work with Mac, so I switched over to Fusion, not really knowing what it was. And it was more or less the same, mm -hmm. you know, but it was different enough, it took me a little bit of a learning curve. And that was before I ever started my own company. I was just toying with it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I when I started doing this and started upgrading, it's it's been, you know, and I. I use it, I think, in a lot of places where other people wouldn't use it. Yeah. Um, you know, I know I building handrails or any, you know, almost everything I do, I just model it up in Fusion and use that as my base measurements. Um, and it, it tends to eliminate a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the hassle. So, this is a Vectrax mill um, that I bought at an auction about two or three years ago. And um, it uh, it came with pretty much almost everything you see on here. One of the big keys that I wanted was having a Z drive and a Y drive. Um, typically when you buy Bridgeport mills that have a drive motors on them, they only drive the X axis. Mm -hmm. You have to do the Y axis by yourself. And for anybody that's ever done done a lot of manual work, you gotta crank this stupid handle right here about 400 times you know yeah. each each full turn is only a hundred thousandths of rise so you know you can you really if you got a lot of parts uh you really wear your arm out and um so we're on all three x y and z x y and z and i've got dro on the x and the y not on the z um but one of the nicest things in addition to my drives is it came with a pneumatic uh tool changer so I can change my tools with this and I don't have to get the wrench on top like you used to have to do. And that's what I grew up doing. Um, you know, so what, one of the biggest things is I can change my tools out pretty quick. If I need to, if I need to drop the table down, I'm not sitting here doing like that. This is the best machine I ever could have got. The ways are almost perfect. Um, you know, there's there's very there's no wear in the ways. There's a little bit of little bit of damage to them, but no wear. And uh, and also it you know it came with like the ring light, and I had a a uh, I added me a little spray mister to it, you know, and a few uh, a few tool fixturing things on the back. You know, it really it for the most part, you know, I can do a lot of work right here without having to move and I don't have to do a lot of math. I don't have to, you know, most, most of the time, if I'm working in the middle, I can kind of just set it and forget it for at least one pass. You know, yeah. this little dial here, it's a hundred thousandths mm -hmm. graduation or it's a one thousandths graduation, hundred thousandths dial. And you can dial in pretty close, yeah. you know, I mean, you can, you can, for the most part, if you're not taking big heavy cuts, because it's not a big heavy machine, you know, yeah. you can dial in within about a thou or a half thou comfortably. Nice. What kind of what kind of parts have you made on this so far? So one of the my favorite part I made back in November, um, this part here, and I can yeah. get some pictures of it later. Um, it is a motor mount, and it goes up against a stainless steel tank. And, uh, and drives a shaft that goes through the middle of the stainless steel tank. Um, the motor mounts to this side, and this is the tank side. There's actually a brass bushing that got pressed into this um, with a pretty tight fit, and then a little, there was a Teflon seal. So the shaft, they would fill the tank up with acetone, and they, did, you know, and they needed to be able to spin something in the tank without the acetone spilling out of the tank. So this was not my design this was a design given to me 
Um, but it, for, for a manual shop, it poses a good number of challenges for me. Um, so on both sides have separate features that are on the same center line so that the, uh, the two bores are on the same center line. They're about, uh, but they're offset from the center of the part. This whole pattern here was on the center line of the part, but these two holes and these three hole and this three hole pattern here were offset off of the center line of the part. So what I ended up doing was I just made a little base plate that at, in fact, out of the same material, I just, it was an off cut from the material I bought and I made that piece to mount up to the four hole pattern there. So I stuck it in the mill and I drilled these four holes and bored this hole on to the proper depth. And then I mounted this to the back side of that and took and indicated off of these sides here to ensure I wanted to make sure that this was actually square to those holes um, as they were machined and it worked perfectly. Not, I mean, it had to be right, you know, it didn't have to be within a couple thousandths or anything, but I got it within a couple thousandths, you know. <laughs> solid work. Thank you. Well, solid work on Fusion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you mind if we uh, take a look up Ab in your office? Absolutely. One of the things I didn't realize that the zoning laws, mm -hmm. I didn't care at the time. Zoning laws don't allow me to have employees at the shop. Right. Which is great because I work by myself. But when I decide to hire somebody, yeah. like, or if I need to move shops, yeah. and I need to hire somebody to run the shop while I move, well, I can't do it. You know, it's yeah. like catch 22. I, you know, so we'll figure that out one of these days. But that first question, what motivates me? I, I thought about that quite a bit. <laughs> the challenge is is really what motivates me you know I, I think about all the time like man you know if this gets big I could have a you know end up having a lot of money but like that that doesn't matter it's rather if it was easy everybody would do it you know and uh, and I I think that that's also the biggest piece of advice you know is this is hard you know I've I've gone through and continue to go through a lot of you know heartache and stuff like that uh just because this this takes up a lot of my time and a lot of times it doesn't feel like it's getting me anywhere you know but it, i think if i was in it for the money i wouldn't i wouldn't have kept doing this you know but i'm not in it for the money i'm in it for the challenge so you know, I, I think that would be my piece of advice is if, if you want to do something, don't do it for the money because the money's, the money won't be there unless you love what you're doing. You know, if you don't really love it, just go get a job doing it. But if you really love it, then pick it up on your own, you know, but you got to understand that it, it's a dedication, you know, it takes up every minute of my life, <laughs> you know, luckily I'm here at home so I can. I can spend a lot of time with my kids too, you know, but, uh, but it's definitely harder than the money would justify. Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here. And if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.